What's up, Dart family? We are in the Dart language tour where I annotate the documentation for you. Uh, we're on control flow statements, uh, specifically today, for loops. Um, yeah, so whenever you have a, um, a collection of things um, and you need to uh, operate on each of them, you could, you could break those out uh, bit by bit, one by one, um, and, and operate on them, you know, run some logic, uh, pass them into a function. But it's more programmatic um, to do them as a group uh, at once um, and have, uh, have the operation be dynamic, um, uh, taking those in together, if you will. So that's the point of a for loop. All right, is the ability to iterate. Um, let's just take this first example and I'll show you without the for loop what I'm talking about. Uh, so if you're brand spanking new to uh, programming, this first bit is for you. If we didn't have a for loop, how would we add, um, I believe it's, Zero, one, two, three, four. We would have five exclamation points on this thing. Dart is fun. And what we're trying to produce here is the string dart is fun, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. What we could do is we could take this variable called message. Okay. Um, and we can say message dot write. Okay. Um, and basically I'm, I'm doing one by one what's happening down here. A string buffer is a special type of um, object in Dart where we have sort of this, I kind of imagine this is like electricity, you know, it's, it's kind of live and it's just waiting for something else to happen on top of it. Uh, so Dart is fun and then we're able to write um, to it. It's kind of like an open file if you've ever worked with files before. Okay, so we're gonna do that just like that. Let's comment this out so we don't actually do something there. Now let's just print our message. So what we've done is um, we have this message variable. It says dart is fun, it's a string buffer. We're able to write to that message which appends a character to the end. Um, and then we're just gonna print it. So let's see what happens. All right, dart is fun. Now, Dart is five times the fun. One times five is five. So let's do this uh, five times total. All right, so each time we're just gonna say message.write, message.write, message.write uh, in that same character. Finally print the message. And this is how we get our desired outcome. Dart is fun with a five exclamation points. Now in practice, the number of times we may need to do this in a program, depending on what we're doing, can change. Um, and it's it's just not very sustainable to write code like this. Um, and in fact, like the more you write code, the more you realize that the it's there's there's virtue in being lazy, um, doing as little as possible. Uh, and for loops are one of those. Okay, so again, we still want to produce this dart is fun with five exclamation points, but we want to, um, we either want to iterate over an object or over an, a number of times. Uh, for example, in, in Ruby, I might say five times do, and then I'll say maybe there's an integer. Okay, and then that represents um, like the number one or something. Uh, or the or you know the first time and then I would say uh, let's see I, if I had like the message and I was able to write to it just like this I would do that um, so this is kind of like a, a Ruby way to say hey I don't, I don't know why I did that um, it's kind of the Ruby way to say uh, do this thing five times okay uh, each time it, it goes through if I wanted to use um, a local variable I could do that but um, that that's kind of how you would do that um, we don't have 
this feature exactly in Dart. What we have is this for loop. Um, so we're going to use that instead. Okay. Um, they gave us, you know, the code that we're going to use, but let's try to just build it up. Um, what I want you to first notice is that we are not operating on top of this string buffer message um, to start. We are instead saying for some condition, do some logic. Okay, so this is a very sort of like what I would call a pure way to, to iterate over something. And um, we're not taking the message itself and saying like iter iterate over each character inside of it. Um, and, and I'll show you what I mean later about um, iterating over characters. Okay, so somehow we need to say uh, we need we need like three things in here. We need a let's just say a starting position. We need a um, condition, and then we need to change it. Okay, and and eventually what we want to do is is write these exclamation points to our message. Um, if we want to do this. Oops, five times, um, the convention, I think, is to say uh, we need a local variable in here. Uh, it's usually called i, or you could use x, it doesn't matter. Um, i equals zero. We don't use commas, we use semicolons to, to separate these. The condition is um, increment i until it's less than five, and then the way we're going to change it is just add one each time, which is I plus plus. Okay, that's that's this here. Um, we could have started from zero and said less than, oops, less than or equal to four. Um, if we wanted to say less than five, but we started at one, this might be more English language friendly uh, because we literally want to start on the first time and do it five times, okay? So the first time we go through uh, i, i is equal to one, okay? Um, we're not really using this i variable, uh, but it's, it's just used for the number of times we're looping through. Again, Ruby has this feature where you say five times do, and then you have your logic here in the block. Um, and that's, that's, that's why Ruby uh, is loved by so many people. Um, it's very developer friendly. Um, this is, is much more, uh, what's the word? Um, Im, uh, imperative? Yeah, I think it's imperative because you have to put in all the details. It's not declarative. Whereas later, I think something we'll do is we'll, we'll say like, uh, um, like if you had an array or a, this thing in, in Dart, and you would say for each, okay? And then you would do some stuff, you know, whatever. Um, and this is operating on each element in this object, okay? Uh, we're getting an element like that here, we're just not using the variable itself, we're just uh, doing this to to manage the number of times we go through. Okay, I think I've I've beat that uh, that idea enough. Let's go ahead and print our message, and we're done with this. Um, and we should get Dart is fun that same output. Okay, and there it is. So the for loop, we have a starting point, we have a condition, uh, and we change the variable. Um, and we can use the variable in here if we wanted to. For example, we could say write i. Uh, so now it's going to say Dart is fun 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 instead of exclamation points because now we're using that variable uh, to append onto there. Okay, there you go.
And it's kind of cool that you have a, a string buffer and you're able to write an integer to it. Um, pretty sure that that would be the same thing. Yeah, so pretty versatile, that's good. That, that's the, uh, the gist of a for loop, okay? This is a common thing in, in other programming languages, but if you're brand new, this is, um, that's the idea behind it. Okay, um, a lot of us, I guess, uh, I'm making an, an assumption here. Um, if you're a web developer, or even if you're just a developer in general, like a lot of people have exposure to JavaScript um, because it's ubiquitous, it's kind of used everywhere, it seems. Uh, it says closures, which are a reference to a function, uh, inside of Dart's for loops, capture the value of the index. Um, I think JavaScript is reference-based, whereas um, Dart is, it looks like it's value-based here. Because apparently this code that they're giving us right here produces a different outcome when you run it in JavaScript, which is kind of annoying. Um, because it's, it's counterintuitive based on how you read the code. Okay, um, and that all has all to do with like lexical scope whenever the, the function's defined. Um, okay, let's take a look at this and just see what, it, what it's doing so we can understand uh, what the authors of the documentation are trying to tell us. Okay, first things first. We have a variable called callbacks. It's an empty list or array. That's all that's doing, okay? Uh, the second bit, we have a for loop. We're starting at zero, um, and then we're incrementing by one until it's less than two. So that looks like it's gonna be i equals zero. It's gonna increment it. So then i is gonna be equal to one, uh, and then it's gonna increment it again. i is gonna be equal to two, but two is not less than zero, so that's false. So that one isn't actually gonna run. So it's only gonna run twice. This for loop is only going to run twice. Okay. So we have this we have this empty array called callbacks, and we're saying dot add. This is the anonymous function or the closure that is storing the value of i at the time that the for loop is run because later we're actually, we're gonna invoke that method. We're gonna call it uh, down here, okay? So the first time it goes through callbacks is this array it's going to have as its first element, this anonymous function where it's going to print zero, okay? The second element is gonna be another anonymous function and it's gonna print one, okay? That's what i is gonna be equal to. Um, apparently in JavaScript, uh, it turns out that this this becomes two somehow. Um, I've never played around with that myself, but um, apparently that's a big deal. So this is this is kind of the uh, the final collection of things that we get um, when we run this this for loop. Okay, so this is the outcome. It is a list or an array of things and actually just do that okay that way we can just kind of see it better uh, two anonymous functions or closures okay so the callbacks is these things here for each I showed this a little bit ago uh, where it operated on a list of elements we have a list of elements here uh, for each of these do this um, do this little call invoke the method okay um, yeah so this is kind of this can be hard to read um, let me just fix these things get some space all right so what is going to happen um, we're, we're first getting a warning that says avoid using for each with a function literal. Okay, remember, uh, function literal is also a, a synonym for an anonymous function. If we view the docs on this, I think it'll, it'll tell us that 
uh, yeah, this anonymous function inside of here. Um, instead, use the for um, the for loop like that. Um, right, 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 right. Print. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this for each thing, what it's doing is it's basically taking each element and it's saying we, we need to invoke this thing. We want to call um, this this function because callbacks for each, this C right here represents this whole thing here. Okay, so that callback, that anonymous function, is actually going to be called. All right, um, I don't know how to like, just call it itself um, manually, but this is, th this is what that's doing. Okay, that's what that's doing right there. Okay, I think if I print this, or sorry, if I run this, we're going to get zero and one. Yeah, because it's gonna just, it's gonna print zero and then it's gonna print one. These are the instructions for this, this um, function that's being called in the future, right here. Okay, so it says the output is zero and then one as expected. In contrast, the example would print two and two, then two in JavaScript. Uh, if the object that you're iterating over is an iterable, such as a list or a set, and if you don't need to know the current iteration counter, you can use for in form of iteration. Okay, um, so there is another form. It's called the for in. Yeah, it looks like they have an entire iterable collections code lab. Maybe we'll create a video out of that in the future. Um, but let's just take a look at what that looks like. Okay, um, you need to, I like that. Okay, so if we were instead, let's, let's take this reference, let's instead, um, you know, this isn't a good example. So you see how we're using I up here when we increment it? and we are printing you know, zero and then one. Uh, down here, we don't have that i local variable. Um, so this is kind of a way to instead, okay. Yeah, so you see this warning, how it said avoid using for each with a function literal. Let's instead convert this line, line 18, using this for in notation. So we have callbacks, okay, that's an array. There's two elements in it in that list. That's just, this is our local variable called callback. So var, for var callback and callbacks, um, let's do, see we don't have an interview method. What we wanna do instead is this right here. Except we would now, this would be callback since we're that work? Okay, so if that's the same thing, what is it saying? The value of the local variable callback isn't used. Nope. Callback in callbacks. Huh. I don't think this would work because it's Try removing the variable or using it. I wonder if we could do this. For each one of these. Maybe maybe it's it's done a different way. Maybe we just say callback.call. Can you do that? Yeah. 
Huh. Okay, that's interesting. So we had um, our callback, which is this, this, yeah, interesting. So we didn't have to like pass it this anonymous function notation to the for each. All we had to do is say callback.call or you could just invoke it like that because now this generic callback for each one of these represents this entire element. So you can just call it like that. We run it, we should get zero and one again. And we do, okay. Um, yeah, so two ways to do the same thing. I mean, do it again, we'll get zero, one, zero, one. Like so. Okay, live coding rarely works out like that. Okie dokie. <clears throat> All right, so there's an entire code lab on using for in. Uh, which we can do in the future. Uh, but for now, the final section of for loops <clears throat> is more about this um, uh, for each method as another option. And it says it has to be an iterable class. Um, up here, we read that if the object you're referring to or that you're iterating over is an iterable, such as a list or a set, I don't know that a map is. Um, we can do this, yeah. So this is kind of interesting. I'm just going to comment all this stuff out that we just worked on. Uh, and let's format the rest of it. OK, we have ourselves a collection. It's a list of integers. Uh, in fact, let's just be verbose about it, shall we? A list of integers. All right. Now, I'm going to say collection for each print. OK, so it prints one, two, and three. For each of these things, print them. Now, usually, what we have to do is pass something to print. Um, Ruby has this, um, this idea of what's called um, uh, symbol to proc, uh, where if if I have a method um, on a particular collection, let's say I have, um, um, yeah, we'll just use the same variable like collection um, dot map. I can say, uh, let's say I have a, a thing called double. What this would do is it would, um, it would take each of these and return to oops, two, four, six. It would double uh, each of the elements. Uh, this is what, what we have in Ruby. It's called symbol to proc, and it's a shorthand for the following. Where I can say collection dot map do, um, and then I have each, let's say, element. So I'm just going to use el for element. Um, you know, actually, let's just use the number. We have we have these numbers in here. So if I had uh, number times times two, okay. So that's how we're doubling it. Um, but actually, what I would do is I would call the method double and pass in the number. And then maybe somewhere else in my code down here, I have a, um, a method name called double. It takes a, a parameter like in for number. Uh, and then it just does n times 2. OK. Um, instead of writing out all this verbose code like this, um, I can just say ampersand colon double, it's called symbol to proc. Um, and it passes each element from the collection to that method. And um, just a very developer friendly way to look at something. Collection dot map, uh, I'm doubling each one of those things. And because it's a map, it keeps the same form and um, spits out an array. So that's really cool. Um, I really like that in Ruby. 
Um, it's kind of the same here where for each element in the collection you can just pass uh, the function that you would normally have to do something like this. You would normally have to say like, um, let's say if we had a for loop, right? Let's just use the one we just had. For var uh, number in collection, okay, we would say print number. All right, so now instead of doing that one, I'm gonna comment that out. I'm gonna run this, and we should get the same output, right? And we do. Okay. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot more words here. It's a lot more verbose. Uh, you could do it the other way as well, where you have uh, var i equals zero, and then you're gonna say, I needs to be less than, and see here's the deal. Um, see what would you say? Number dot length. Sorry, collection dot length. Because that needs to be a little dynamic. Because you don't know how many times you're going to iterate over something ahead of time. Um, and then I plus plus. And then you're going to print collection at I. Okay, so I starting at zero so that you can take the zeroth place and print it. This is the other way to do it with a for loop. Okay, um, so we've seen how Ruby does it. We've seen a very verbose for loop here. Uh, previously, we did the, um, let's see, just command Z back to it. There we go. For var number in collection, print the number. Uh, finally, you can realize, hey, that's, um, there's a nicer uh, syntactic sugar for that, and it's just collection for each print, uh, where you pass in the function name there. Okay, that's all they're trying to show there, um, is that you can just pass in the function name like that. So I hope I explained how you start with the, the more difficult way to do something, um, and then you're able to do it in a more um, idiomatic, uh, developer-friendly way. Cool, so that is it on for loops. Next time we will go over while and do while and the rest of the control flow statements. See you then.